Hey everybody, welcome back to another very exciting stream here at the Photoshop Training Hour. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez, and with me, my amazing friend, incredible Photoshop artist, I consider him the original Photoshop master, Mr. Deke McClellan. Hey Deke, how are you? I am great, Jesus. <laughs> how about you? I am fabulous. I'm very excited to have you on here. I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned it to you in the past, and I know I mentioned it in several other streams and videos that I've done, that you are like one of the people that I've looked up to growing up when it comes to Photoshop in specific. I bought your total training course way back in the day, Photoshop 7. It was about 32 hours, I believe. You did it with um, total training. And I've watched that thing so many times. I told people I've seen that video course more than any other course ever. So um, thanks to you, I started getting into Photoshop and learning a whole bunch. Um, to this day, I look up to you and I'm very excited to have you here and see what killer tips and tricks you have for everybody. That is very kind of you. Thank you very much. So did, I, I just have a question for you about total yeah. training. Did, was it on DVD or yes. VHS? D it was DVD, DVD. DVD. Okay. yeah. They came well, in, we, I don't know, we seven. We around to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but um, I see there's people in the chat. We have uh, The Fear Photo saying hello, Walid saying yo, and Riyadh saying big fan. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave your questions in the chat. And also something very important. Uh, Deke has a brand new YouTube channel. I don't know how new it is, about a year or so at least. And about a year, yeah. About a year. Yeah, and a if you months, guys yeah. look in the comments down below or in the, in the description, there's going to be a link where you can click over to Deke's channel so that you can subscribe. Subscribe. He has a lot of amazing tutorials. Um, if you enjoy my stuff, you're definitely going to like his stuff. I learned a lot of the, of the skills that I have through Deke's material, so I'm sure you're going to love his channel. Make sure you click on it on the link below. But Deke, do you want to talk a little bit about what we're going to learn today? Yeah, so the idea is um, I'm, I've created a uh, killer tricks mm -hmm. video, and it's, it's just seven killer tricks with three more at my uh, Patreon. Awesome. And so for a total 10, you know. And um, I wanted to make them tricks. Um, years and years ago, I did the <laughs> <laughs> I did this video called uh, "101 Tricks in in Five Minutes," and it wow. was just keyboard shortcuts. Yeah. Because uh, have you not seen it? Seriously, have you I, not seen it? I don't think I've seen it. You should check it out. Right. Actually, it's, it's worth checking out. It's probably the the best thing I ever did. And <laughs> and it and it's just um, we we definitely put more work into it than anything. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's uh, kind of a music video, and um, parts of it were um, um, it, 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 were were um, it's kind of a dancing. I, I was going. I'm trying to remember what we ripped off, and now I can't. Oh, popular. <laughs> okay. By Nasser. <laughs> yeah. And we and and it's um um. But the whole conceit was that I was going to get done no matter what. There were always there were always magazines that were doing like 101 tips, you know, sure. uh, for for an entire magazine, and I just thought. Why buy a magazine when we can get through in five minutes? And Absolutely. Then, so it's just keyboard shortcuts. So, you know, it's just like, um, and we, 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 were, we were kind of talking about once upon a time, keep, everybody loved keyboard shortcuts, and now fading off a little bit. But the uh, what I wanted to do here was, was killer tricks. I'm not going to show all of them, but we'll get through five or six anyway. That um, I'm hoping there's some element of it you're just like, I hope there's you keep slapping your head all okay. the time. Because I really want it to be the kind of thing that um, you don't know. So I it's not it. just, oh, did you, you let's, know. Let's, if you want to jump yeah, right into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. So, I'm going to switch over to your screen. Um, okay. There we go. So people can see. And yeah, let's. I'm excited to see what you have. Okay. So all I want to do, just just as a setup here, is I want to take this guy and I want to give him a gold background. So nothing, nothing special. And also I want the rays to emanate. And so these rays... I find, I don't know about you, but anytime I do rays, because I got a gazillion different rays tricks, you know, <laughs> right. that I just use generative fill anymore. Mm -hmm. I just ask for rays. And this way it gives you like, <laughs> like stuff you would never do. There's nothing regular about these. They right. overlap at bad angles and stuff. And it's perfect. And so what I want to do is I just show, so, so the, the warm up trick here is just colorize, just how you colorize something. And I think okay. the typical way that that we do it right is to just grab a, a hue saturation layer, and then I do have my uh, my uh, properties panel up enough mm -hmm. to show this off. But it's just it's really simple stuff, right? Just turn on colorize, dial in the color you want, and I want a gold, so I'll type in forty five degrees, and I just nothing subtle, right? I want to crank it up. 
Right. So the first problem, the first very obvious problem is I have no desire to color that border. Mm -hmm. And so what I need to do, because he's on top, obviously, and it's going to color everything and uh, below it, is uh, just give it an alt click right there on the horizontal barrier in order to um, clip it. Right. And so, but already I feel like we've done too much work compared to what I'm going to show you. This mm -hmm. is this is a lot of work, but the biggest problem with hue saturation, and I think very likely people don't really know about this, is it's one of those, like if I were to go down here and grab, I don't use photo filter a lot, but if I were to bring it up, it's a totally different animal, I'll turn off hue saturation for a moment. Mm -hmm. And it is another sort of colorization function, but it's got this checkbox, preserve luminosity. And that way you are preventing things from, in this case, darkening. You just want it to, you know, you want the luminosity not to go haywire. Right. When you think you're just adjusting colors, right? And so what happened, with, because this is old, because hue saturation is an elderly, you know, mm -hmm. thing, it doesn't have that checkbox. Right. And so what, it's easy to think, well, I'm just colorizing. That's all I'm doing. I'm just affecting the colors here, but I'm really affecting luminance like crazy. Mm -hmm. I happen to be on the bright end of the spectrum right now. The brightest is going to be a hue of 60. Right. But if you add 180 for a complementary color, then you're going to get 240 and you're going to darken up like crazy. So it's no right. This is obviously darkening. But, a but lot. you just did something that I don't think a lot of people know. You just did a mathematical equation on the input box. <laughs> and actually, this is this is this is good because we didn't used to have this. Not not too long ago, there was like this special design version of Photoshop that uh -huh. they had for a few minutes, you know. Yeah. And and but now you can just do regular math, like you've been able to do in InDesign and, and Photoshop. I mean, Illustrator for a while. Right. So, complementary color specifically, if you want to co color complement, right, then you add 180 degrees or. If your first value is more than 180 degrees, you subtract 180. Wow. Either way, you're going to get that color complement. All right. And I'm going to say that right there, that even though I knew that feature, I didn't ever put that together. That if the value is 180 or more, you subtract. And if it's less, right. well, if it's, yeah, that's right. I had yeah. no idea. All right. Yeah. Awesome. And it depends on the dialog box. Some, some dialog boxes are smart enough to keep up with you, and you can just add yeah. 180 all the time. Sure. Anyway, here, of course, the hue saturations. One of the dopier, you know, adjustment layers. But anyway, if I had forty five, and uh, mm -hmm. then because I want because I want that golden, you know, because sixty, right? Anytime you go with sixty, you're starting to get into the yellow green territory. So anyway, whatever. But if I turn this off, then you can see that it's way brighter, right? So and that's not what we want. Theoretically, you might go, oh yeah, it's a happy accident. I like the brightness, but generally, and I have I have the previews turned off here. Did you know you can turn the previews off for 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 blend modes through the prop, uh, preferences panel, right? Or no? Through what? Through no, the, I, the only the only way I found to do it, I, I would just send people on a search for that if if it uh -huh. bugs you, because I it's really a great thing to be yeah. able to see the blend modes change. But when you're showing them off, sometimes you don't want them to sure. flicker all over the place. There's a bit uh you can throw it in one of the preference folders. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of text only code that you can throw okay. in there that turns it off. I, oh. I forget what it is. But anyway, color. And there you go. can see that that it's just affecting the color. All right. I did all that work. That was way too much work, right? For that. <laughs> so I'll turn that off. And so let me just show you the way I prefer. You may already know this. This is pretty brain dead, but I'm just gonna add a color overlay layer. And I think I think especially when when you're new to Photoshop, because this is kind of the experience it gives you by default. I believe it presents you with red by default, which mm -hmm. is pleasant. And and it's like, why why in the world would you ever use color overlay in a million years? And so what I want to do is just color. And so this is going to be the, the exact same experience we saw with, with hue saturation. The difference is that we don't have to go through a lot of those different steps. And now I'll just dial in. 45 degrees. I also want to show you this because I think this is interesting. Notice this is the colorization we get with 45. I'm a big HSL fan. I, I mm -hmm. like to work this way as opposed to RGB values. It just seems like a lot easier to control for yep. me. And I really don't know how these guys mix half the time. And um, so let's say I go with a brightness value 50%. I, I think you'll appreciate this. I just want you to see this. So brightness 50%, saturation 100. You think you should by all rights. I think this is where this gets a little difficult to predict. You would think this would give you full saturation because that's mm -hmm. what you asked for. Brightness shouldn't matter. Right. But if I, if I reverse these values, 
I get the exact same effect. That is the same effect. Mm -hmm. If you if you were to look at the video and go back, actually the well, I could show it to you, but just take my word for it. For whatever reason, saturation and brightness um, kind of have to both be maxed out if you want maximum color. Yeah. So I'll just go ahead and click that. And now just notice if I turn on hue saturation, turn off color overlay, I am maintaining basically the same effect. I think I saw something change a little bit right here, but generally speaking, you're gonna get that same effect out of both of them. And this is just an easier way to work. Now, the problem with it potentially is that, well, I'll show you this in a moment. I'm gonna turn off this layer for a second, just so you can see that this guy is enclosed by what's known as not only a layer mask. So we have a layer mask right here. Mm -hmm. So if I were to turn off this junk up above and shift click on this guy, right, that turns it off. You can tell now that it's that it's uh, <laughs> standard <laughs> fill because it has a blob in the middle. And then uh, shift click it again just to turn a layer mask on. So I just want you to, to, to establish some terms. We all know layer mask. This thing on the outside, the reason we have the checkerboard pattern out here is the function of the transparency mask. And that is what we normally just think of as the physical limitations of the layer, right? Mm -hmm. If I control click on this, it's right there. And it's it's still a mask. It's actually built in though to the nature of the pixel. So if we had feathering, there's gotta be something that tells Photoshop that we have translucency levels. And that is why it's called a transparency mask. Now I wanna make this clear because what I'm gonna do here is add a little bit of glow. I think I was showing this right here. I want mm -hmm. it to feel like the rays are emanating from that seal. And so I'll go back over here. And what we need to do, because I'm doing it on this layer, right? I could apply an outer glow to my seal layer right there, but instead I'm going to do it the other way around just for the sake of demonstration. I'll get an inner glow going because that's going to create the glow on the inside, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I've already dialed in everybody. I went with a hue of 40 degrees. And I've got it set to screen by default. I, I don't want to be subtle, so I'm cranking this guy up to 100%. And then I want, okay, th 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 this, I think it's particularly useful to be on your thing because you've got major views going right now and in general. Um, and so there's a possibility that somebody who can do something from Adobe is listening right now. Notice I'm going to crank this up to its maximum of, of 250 pixels. And I want anyone who feels the same way to join in with me why do we have maximum values why do maximum values exist throughout the software and they're all over the map size for some reason <laughs> cranks up to 250 and a lot of this is based on i'll tell you it's based on what the resolution of images used to be mm. and because these are physical pixels and they're not resolution dependent this can be a real problem mm -hmm. you may want to go way beyond uh, 250, and I wish this wasn't here, and I wish it wasn't here, especially in Lightroom and Camera Raw, mm -hmm. where they put those numerical limitations on there to make sure that you obey the rules of good taste. I hate that stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I want, are... I want to, you know, engage in bad taste if that's what yeah, I want yeah. to do. Anyway, so you may, you know, and then there's the choke value. None of these are the tricks, by the way. I've only showed you one trick. That no, was... no, but there's a whole bunch of tricks already, like that whole limitation and why that is, and or, you know the adding on the hue saturation. I mean, even though a lot of people probably knew about the math, they didn't really realize that 180 trick. So you've shown us a lot of tricks. Okay, good, because I've only shown you one. Perfect. So <laughs> By the way, um, Sorry, I just want to say um, thank you to everybody who's coming in the chat. We have a lot of action oh, yeah. going on. We have uh, Pedro from Germany, Betty from Houston, uh, Tanzvir saying he's a big fan. Um, we have Shelly from Oregon, uh, Shanjeev from India, people from all over the world. Uh, Work Wood just commented, I just subscribed to Deke's channel. Thank you so much, everybody. The link to Deke's channel is below in the description. Make sure you subscribe. Um, Goodbye. Leonard, um, we have Alfred from Vienna. So a lot of a lot of people watching and commenting. Stephen saying, uh, Stephen Ch uh, Childers, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, Stephen, is saying a lot of pro tips. He's enjoying them. Thank you so much. Let us know in the chat if you have any questions, what you're enjoying, where you're watching from. We just want to see as much comments as possible. Thank you so much, everybody. And I'll hand it back to you, Deke. Okay, so it's, here, here's where I want to knock your socks off. So yes. just choke isn't it. Choke's not it. Choke <laughs> is just a really cool way of filling. If you choke all the way, right, yeah. you're just filling in all the 
the softness. Anyway, but I do want to choke it just because I really actually kind of wanted a bigger size value. So I'll click OK. And so what's the big problem? The big problem is I wanted to surround the layer mask with the glow okay. right there, right? So if I shift click to turn it on and off, off and on. But I don't want it going on the outside here. And so if I if I left the frame on, it looks like it's caused by the frame, mm -hmm. that somehow the frame is glowing. But it's not. It's the edge right there that's glowing. And so what you have to do is, you, there's a few different ways, but like if if it's a standard, if it's a standard layer and it doesn't have a special little badge on it, like this guy for a smart object, you can just double click on the thumbnail. But if that doesn't work, then you can double click on a little empty area, like below the name. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason I say this is that brings up the layer style dialog box. And I think for most people, these check boxes are a mystery. <laughs> and What's what's interesting about them is even though they don't all say the word effects, notice the word effects appears mm -hmm. in the first, uh, fourth, and fifth one. They all affect layer effects. They're all right. about controlling how layer effects work. And so in this case, we've got uh, layer mask hides effects. And if I were to turn that on, I would get rid of the effect where I want it, which is around the layer mask. So mm -hmm. you get the idea, right, is it's the layer mask is now hiding the effect, which can be very useful at times to, to cut through an effect mm -hmm. as opposed to shape it. Yep. This this thing right here is transparency shapes layers. Now this is this is what I want is the opposite of this, right? I want to get rid of this glow and run the outside. Yep. It would be nice. I think it would be helpful if if Photoshop would talk to us in the same language all the time. Turning this on is the same as turning this off where transparency is concerned. So I was telling you, this is the transparency mask, the physical limitations of the layer. And so if you turn that off and you say, I no longer want that to affect how the outer glow behaves, mm -hmm. it goes out now and it ignores the shape of the layer, but it pays attention to the shape of the actual mask, mm. which can be amazing. But what it should say is transparency. It should say transparency hides effects. I think it should. Yep. And then turning it on would have the effect of what is actually turning it off. But I want you to see that anyway. Click OK. And so now, because like that's one of those checkboxes that when when I when I was growing up in Photoshop, I was like, why would I ever use that? Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to show you second use in just a moment. But now the problem, of course, is I just let the the color overlay mm -hmm. leak out of the layer. Right. And so much so that it is now as if I turned off the clipping mask. Now we have it outside here in the border. And so what you have to do in that case is double click in order to bring this up again. And if and if you're like messing around with your inner glow and you're trying to figure out how to get to those check boxes, you click on blending options right there. And now this guy. So blending interior effects is group. These are interior effects. So mm -hmm. color overlays on the inside, inner glows on the inside. It actually tells you if you hover over it, it also includes satin, which I don't think people use very often. And with good <laughs> reason. And I, But notice now if I turn it on, it will clip within the boundaries because basically what's happening is it's not clipping now. It's not doing anything with the transparency. It is now saying it's going to do everything that's inside the layer to the layer first. And then that's why it says blend them as group. It mm -hmm. means first. And then <laughs> it's going to blend it with the rest of it, at, at which point I'll go ahead and click OK. And you can see now it doesn't go outside the layer. Wow. And so if nothing else, what I want to emphasize here is if your layer effects start going wonky, which they frequently do, I think, you you apply it. They seem so simple, right? I mean, you use inner glow and inner shadow and, and outer glow and outer shadow all the time. Mm -hmm. And they start behaving in ways that you didn't anticipate Remember, there are these checkboxes, and if nothing else, you can just sit there and stab at them and just try turning. Uh, frequently, these two, if things aren't enclosed inside the, lay, the way you want them to, you can try different variations on these first two checkboxes. Anyway, I'll go ahead and click OK for that one. There's one more that I want to show you, and what was that? No, I showed you all three. Those are the three I wanted to show you. Okay. All right. Now, if you're ready for more, yeah, there's more. Those are just those check boxes. I just want to give you a sense. And the, the the only other one that's there that I think is really interesting, blend clip layers is the same thing except when you have clipping groups going on. Right. And you want to control how those clip. And then vector mass is just if you're not using a pixel based layer mask, you got a vector based layer mask instead. So that's yeah. So there's no questions in the chat, but mysterious unknown revealed said, "I have no questions, but I just wanted to say hi." Hey, mysterious unknown revealed. 
<laughs> your, your message was was shorter than your name. Let yeah. me show you one, one, one more thing though. See how this has got on a border right here in the background? Yep. It's got it's got an bevel on the inside and the outside edges. Okay. And it really is, and it's got a bunch of strokes too. And mm -hmm. they're all happening in and out of the effect. But if I double click, double click on be bevel on the boss right there, I want you to see that this is I didn't click on the right guy. It's this guy. Uh, see, I've got an inner bevel. So why is it happening? It's happening on both sides because both sides are inside that border, right? But let's say you don't want it to be on the outside. So, so the interesting thing that's going on here, and I'll make my I'll make my canvas bigger. I'll just go. I'm very. I want to use a keyboard shortcut, but I'll choose command. And notice I have it turn, set to relative. So I'm just going to grab. But even if I didn't, I just I just want to emphasize the math. If I wanted to relative, what I want to do is grow the canvas independently, like I'm uncropping the image mm -hmm. by 500 pixels. If I turn relative off, yep. I could just enter 500, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, oops, no, I didn't 50. do that. I entered 50. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> All right, minus fifty. There we so go. <laughs> have to do any really tough math now, and yeah. and 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 I'll add five hundred to this one too. So that's just another way to work. Mm -hmm. And then let it go. And what it's going to show us is that we have again a combination. This stuff is just a function. I'll turn these smart filters off. Mm -hmm. that, that we have both the transparency mask. And we have a layer mask on the inside. So if you if you were to turn off the layer mask, that would be affecting the inside edge. Notice that. And then if I turn it on. And by the way, if you're looking closely, you can see that yep. we have some mask on the outside. I'm not going well, to narrate what I'm doing. I'm just well, I was going to say, and it looks like you had a inverted, you created an inverted, inverted mask because when you expand it, I saw the black edges. So I assume yeah. you started with an inverted mask. I did invert it, yeah. And so anyway, so this, but the, 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 the layer mask is outside now. I just mm -hmm. want to make that clear. Yep. Nope. Get and it. so, and so we got transparency mask and, and, and layer mask. And so if I double click on an empty portion of this to bring this up, I can't double click on this because that would open up the smart object. Mm -hmm. Good. Double click here and it should be working. Why is it not working? Don't you hate when things don't work? Yeah. Anymore? Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought I was going to show you something really cool. I'll well, show you. We'll go into... Why I can't? Oh, there oh, it is. There okay, it is. we'll go this yeah. way. Um, so, what I want to show is if I don't want it to appear on the inside edge, I would turn on layer mask hides effects, and you can see the bevel goes away on the inside edge because mm -hmm. that's where it's you know that's yep. what's shaping it. Mm -hmm. And then if I don't want it on the outside edge, I would turn off transparency shapes layer, and then click OK, and that way it goes out. Because I think a lot of times when this kind of stuff happens. We have a temptation to try to make the layer bigger yeah. behind the outside yeah. of the canvas, but you can just turn on that checkbox. And now I'm just pressing Control C right. in order to bring that back up. Now I can go ahead and subtract my 500s if I enter them properly. And then, and then, and I do want to show this because I hate this. So all arrows are pointing in. Mm -hmm. Do you do you, do you have a problem with this alert message? I wonder because I do. I've had a problem with it for a yes, long time. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, because it's a lie. It's just yeah. this big lie of an error message. So the new canvas size will be smaller. We already know that. Yeah. Some clipping. It doesn't say some clipping may occur. It will only occur. It will occur, and that's just a lie. It's no. It won't. Actually, it should say some clipping won't occur. So be and then you just click few, and that's all that should happen at this point <laughs> because you don't want to learn more because it's going to lie to you some more anyway. Proceed is what you do. It, the only time you clip is if you're clipping uh, uh, the background, of mm -hmm. course, which is not a layer, by the way. Don't call it background layer. It's not a layer. And then, but we don't have background and masks. Any alpha channels will also get clipped. Right. But your layer mask will not get clipped, which is really cool. Amazing. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Yeah. So, so that's that. And we can move on because I have more. Yeah, let's, but I, oh, go I'm ahead. sorry. I keep looking over here because I've got I've got me on a second screen. Check <laughs> me out, you know, especially if I'm going to start picking yeah. my nose. All no, right. um, so there's no questions in the chat. Again, feel free to leave any um, questions if you have any. It's mostly people saying hello from everywhere. Josefa's Brazil, Brian from Delaware. Thank you so much for joining us. Ian from Russia is saying you guys are great. Thank you so much, Ian. Um, have you ever used the transparency shapes layer box to create specular highlights? That's what I usually usually use it for. For specular highlights. Yeah. That that checkbox I was just playing with. Exactly. Well, if you'll you, have to show me that one because I don't I'll, even know here, what you're talking about. If you um, 
<laughs> if you uh here you go I'll, I'll it's super easy all you need to do is select the brush to paint with white with a soft edge a new layer and a new layer so create and a, a new, new layer okay. yeah create a new okay. layer okay um yeah. obviously nothing in there with the brush so just paint with white you know just a white soft circle somewhere it doesn't really matter where where make it a little bit larger so people could see it yeah just just uh paint like with that? white did you paint want money did you with want white with white with white <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. um, oh well, you you have it clipped, so it's I have it doing turned it. on it's, already. It's already but... doing it. Yep, exactly. So, um, if you uncheck transparency shapes layers, the edges is going to change a little bit. Um, um, if it, it, it's easier to see if you create it on, on a not clip layer. Okay. So this guy. So the, this guy should not be clipped. Uh, yeah. You, so like, funny, you want to see the edges, right? Am yeah, I so, doing this? So like, right? you're doing it fine. So the first layer, layer number one, the brush tool. Don't clip it. Don't clip it. Yeah. Thank you. And then okay. um, double click on it. Change the blending mode to uh, uh, the brush layer. The brush layer. Okay. You yeah. want to change the blend mode? Uh, yeah, but then also uncheck the box. It's better to do it inside the layer style dialog. Okay. And then okay. uh, bring um, under blend mode, change the blending mode to color dodge or any one of the special eight blending modes, but color dodge in this case will work. And then when you change the uh, uncheck the box, you'll see how the edges will change of the um, see that. Oh, wow. Oh, no, I didn't know this. Yeah. Is this specifically because it's a fill opacity eight? <laughs> exactly. That's this right. one, OK, that's yeah. right. So uh, okay. uh, the, the eight blending modes that are that work with fill when you uncheck transparency shape layers, the edges change. With white and color dodge is really good for creating specular highlights. So I use that a lot in compositing. Cool. That's very cool. Yeah, I like that because um, I have never uh, 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 played with that in my in my short, short life. Anyway, I'll turn that back up. Yeah, so that's there, cool. I there like you it. go. Very nice. All right. So that's totally different. So I didn't blow your socks off, but that's okay. <laughs> it's good to keep your socks. So here's something. Have you, have you, um, so this image is, is underexposed for a reason. Okay. I want to show stuff, but, um, have you showed alternatives to color? I mean, to, uh, dodge and burn speaking of color dodge a moment ago. I mean, I have, so but I would love to see what tools. you got. Yeah. And actually okay, this so... might relate to the next question because someone in the chat is asking, do you guys know how to remove highlights from a face? So I'm assuming this technique could potentially help. It might. I'm not going to remove highlights from a face. So I'm going to add highlights because she's under go. I was going. To, I'm going to brighten the eyes and the teeth. Perfect. And Let's then do I'm it. going to give her a little bit of eyeshadow. Let's do it. But um, I got to stop looking off to the side. So because I'm kind, you know, I kind of, oh God, when I see me, I just want to look at me. Okay. So anyway, dodge and burn tools. What? 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 The obvious thing that's really missing about them. They're they're actually great tools. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a flat image. It's very important. Yep. So dodge dodge brightens, burn dark. You know, darkens. Mm -hmm. We know that. And then what this has, and it's developed over the years, is Protect Tones, mm -hmm. right? And so what Protect Tones does, and so Tones is is and, and it, it is used very loosely inside Photoshop as a term. If you're looking at that hint right there, yep. you can see what it's trying to talk about. It's saying shadows and highlights, which are luminance levels, and it's going to keep colors from shifting hues. That's not really what tone means, but basically... What it's trying to pull off here, if I go with, you know, an exposure of 50, which is just fine, and I'm making her eyes brighter, right? Mm -hmm. I'm 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 doing multiple things wrong at this point. I'll make her teeth brighter as well. And so man, many of the problems that I'm conducting here are that I'm making destructive modifications mm -hmm. and that obviously I'm not even working a little bit to uh, control where I paint. So I'm making a big mess of her flesh around her right. eyes and so forth. So this is what and you don't want to do. <laughs> this is what you don't want to do. And the, what part of it could be solved by just having a checkbox right here, by working on an independent layer and having a checkbox that's, that's... available to just about every other tool, mm -hmm. sample all layers, yep. right? Mm -hmm. That would be great. But they don't have it here. Hopefully they will. I imagine programming-wise, that would be handled very easily. Anyway, I'm going to revert the image because I've made such yep. a mess of it. But now... That's one of my I'm favorite gonna... tricks, by the way. Is revert? Revert F12. I love every revert. Day, every day. I love F12. revert because yeah. it's undoable. Yep, I mean, it's that's, undoable. That's right. Yeah. This is the only software, the only Adobe program I know of where revert is undoable. Yeah. It should be undoable it's, everywhere. It's like I literally hit F12 just about every day. Oh, good. Yeah, so you know it's <laughs> and that shows you how much, how many mistakes I make. That it's just easier oh, to start yeah. over. Perpetual. Yeah. How can how can you learn without mm -hmm. making mistakes? Exactly. It's impossible. Yep. That's where learning comes from. I agree. Anyway, I'm going to go with the brush tool, 
uh, just regular old brush. And it's big because we just did that other goofy thing, mm -hmm. which was not goofy. It was very cool. And now I'm going to create an, a new layer and I'm going to call it uh, eyes and teeth. And by the way, I am the worst typist um, on the face of planet because I don't know how to Well, I'm glad that. we have to write prompts now then. Yeah, I know. I do. I mess them up all the time. I could perpetually misspell them. <laughs> okay, so anyway, why does my foreground color it just happens to be a brush always paints with a foreground color? And so I'm going to do the same random job I did before. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to go with the overlay blend mode. So overlay and soft light um, are the blend modes you want to experiment with when you're trying to emulate dodge and burn. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit like old school. So, okay. so that protect tones we just saw a moment ago, overlay will not protect the tones. And so the idea is clip. Um, you don't want to clip your highlights and your shadows. Overlay is going to let you clip. Soft light is not going to clip. And so they are fundamentally different modes. I'll hear people often kind of characterize them, soft light in particular as being overlay at a lower opacity level. It's not. It's a totally different equation. It's the most complex equation of all the different modes. It has square roots in it. And so <laughs> I'm going to switch to overlay, which is a combination dodge and burn working mm -hmm. together. Pardon me. <clears throat> clear my throat. And so you can see that we're getting this stellar effect. Now, two things about it. First of all, of course, it's a little bit too much. But secondly, what I love about it is because we're working on an independent layer, and I think this is easy to, to you know, not really appreciate, is we've got the eraser tool, or you can go layer mask, but I think for this, there's not really much reason to mm -hmm. layer mask this. But I, by default, the eraser tool is set to a hardness of, of 100%, by the way. It's something to watch out for because yep. the other tools are set to opacity levels that are lower, is, except for the healing brushes. Um, but I'm going to set it to 50%, and then I'm going to do a very bad job. I did, you know, I did too bad of a job of brushing, but this is something you can't do at all with Dodge is come back and make some modifications to it like so, mm -hmm. and then you can get in there and you can actually mask lips independently of teeth and you have a great deal of control you could always obviously and i'm not going to work too much and in fact i'm turning her into kind of a pancake clown but we are <laughs> going to i do want to show you this because this is frequently a problem when you're working with teeth is deciding i don't know how often you do this but i do this all the time where i'll go ahead and come up with something that i think looks good and i'll come back tomorrow and i'll say darn it i lit the tongue yeah. You know, I, I left yeah, the tongue all, the all lit up. <laughs> yeah, and this way you can just, you know, you can go back. These are lower teeth, so I should leave them alone. But I could come back and erase them, mm -hmm. which is not the kind of thing. You know, you can history brush it and that kind of thing. All right, so pretend, don't pretend too hard that this eye is in good shape. I guess you're going to have to pretend really hard. That's okay, because I have a different way of dealing with <laughs> eyes. And now what you want to do is take the opacity down, not fill opacity, because this is not, one of the blend modes that reacts differently. The fill, just regular opacity here, take it down to anywhere. What I recommend typically is 20% at the low end. And you can see it's still making a huge difference. This is just a really under uh, um, exposed image. And then all the way up to 30% is mm -hmm. typically your high end. Although in this case, I could go higher. And obviously you can take it to any level you want and it's gonna make an extraordinary difference in right. your image. And it is basically, once again, the same as using dodge or burn. This is the same math that went on with dodge and burn before protect tones. But mm -hmm. you have a lot more control over what's going on. If you want protect tones, I'll create a new layer. And I'll call this guy eyeshadow. And so if you want to darken, for example, adding contouring to an image, but I'm just going to be a little more brain dead. I'll tap the X key so, you know, black is our foreground color. And I'll just paint in some... Uh, what did I do? Did I change something up here? This keeps, stuff keeps happening. Why am I not <laughs> able? Oh, the eraser tool is still You're... selected. Yes. Which never paints. That's a tip. It always erases. And so I'll just <laughs> go ahead and set these to black. And for darkening, you're typically better off with soft light. And it's going to immediately make a big mm -hmm. difference. And it's also going to protect your colors from clipping. Both your shadows and your As opposed to highlights. Overlay as opposed to overlay, Got it's it. not going to protect. And then I would once again, take the opacity value down significantly mm -hmm. for this kind of darkening. Obviously, if you go, if you go with something like 30% here, and I'm just doing it the brain dead way, but 
you can see it's making a huge difference. It's probably way too much. Right. And she already does have high shadows. Mm -hmm. so I'm kind of doubling it. But I'll I'll just take it down to let's say to twenty percent and I just switch the marquee tool so I could just press the two key. But even taking it down like to fourteen percent, this still makes an enormous difference if you're trying to get like really specific results. Nice. So I will show one more thing where before we move yeah, on, on, I, I saw yeah, no, this completely fine. unrelated, but there's a comment that I think I think I know what the answer is. It says, "What happened to Jesus's forehead? I'm seeing what appears to be a scar." And uh, West, West is not a scar. I think what you're referring to, and I'm going to change the camera to my face. I have long hair now, so so I guess like a, a strip came down, and it's just like this little bang thing on my forehead that people think is a scar. No, it's not a scar. It's just long hair now <laughs> so thank you for your concern <laughs> all right that was it i just wanted to make sure that people knew i wasn't you know um they didn't have an accident or something <laughs> can you switch the camera to me for a second yeah sure i'll switch the camera okay. over to you give me one yeah because i want you to see that this is all right here <laughs> there you go these lines right here these are all hairs that I yeah come over oh your hair is you got it that? okay yeah so i didn't want anybody worried about that yeah either, this stuff yeah. <laughs> okay we're yeah. both okay thank you for your concern <laughs> okay yeah all right and now so <clears throat> what i'm gonna yeah, do let's here. Keep going. Oh, i'm sorry this is great no this is great um uh, this there is yeah. no uh, random question in the chat. We don't have to go into it. But if there is an answer, I don't know it. I'm wondering if there is. I don't think there is. But is there a shortcut to switch between Photoshop and Illustrator? No. no. Well, you, you know, can Bridge, a... Bridge has that little yeah. button, that rocket. Yeah, button, but that's in but... Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't even know. There's. I would. That was a hell of a heck of an idea because I would love that. Um, mm -hmm. because I hate doing this stuff and showing everybody everything that's yeah. open. Yep. I would like to be able to switch back and forth. But no, that's not not to my knowledge. That'd be great if somebody finds that out. Yep. Let us know. For sure. Can I did I can I show you something there is? Yeah, that's just, please. That's really um, really no, no, this is this is stupid. This is this, this is, is not dumb. one of my tricks. <laughs> yeah, this is really dumb. Okay. Have you ever have you ever wondered what this stupid checkbox does? Uh, yeah, I Interface. don't know what it does. Yeah. Sure. You don't know what it no, does? No, what does it do? Watch the share button. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it makes the share button blue. Yes, yes. That's, that's all it does. Because <laughs> when you mentioned Illustrator, it has a blue share button too. Which yeah. I, just hate. I hate those marketing buttons where you're yeah. trying to go, okay, yeah. we need to make sure everybody clicks it, on that one. Let's make it blue. It's, anyway, neutral color mode. If you click here to learn more about it, it turns off the blue share there button. There you go. That's an incredible tip. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember how I, upset people were when that came up. And yeah, I... I remember seeing something about it, a way of turning it off, and I just never learned how to do it. So I'm glad I that's, know now. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. And then quit the program so you save your preferences. There you go. Anyway. All right. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get rid of these eyes because I think I made it abundantly clear. I made sure. a mess of them. This is a really cool way of selecting eyes, and it works for just mm. about everybody, some way or other. You're gonna need to do a little tweaking, but switch to the the elliptical marquee tool. So when I do masking stuff, um, which I, I I love and masking just keeps getting better and better and more interesting. The elliptical marquee tool is one of the most natural emulation tools in the software for selections because a lot of things are like you could, you know, the, the front of her nose is going to be circular. Her nostrils are going to have little mm -hmm. circles and ellipses in them. A lot of contours and faces are elliptical mm -hmm. and one of them is your eyes. So if you go like this, so you know you know the spacebar trick obviously mm -hmm. to to move the the thing around so you get it on the upper lid and then what you do is you press the shift and alt keys mm -hmm. so shift and option on the Mac so you get the little x yep. next to your cursor and this is this is my favorite use for it is to yep. just go ahead and trace along the bottom uh edge of the eyelid yep. and then you've got the the <clears throat> thing selected and then why is my background color? So you actually have more flexibility than with the brush because the brush is always painting with the foreground color. This way, the background color is white. And so I'll just press control backspace, command delete on mm -hmm. the Mac in order to fill that guy. And then I could do the same thing. You have to do the mm -hmm. eyes independently. 
because there's not really a way or in a quick mass mode or something because there's not really a way to say right okay now that i already have an eye selected i'm gonna go do this yeah. number on the other eye right yeah and so yeah. anyway the intersect will deselect yeah, the other exactly eye. Yeah. exactly yeah it's so funny and, that you show this example because i've shown something similar but i don't i do the iris not the entire eye but it's the same thing and it works with a lot of thing. things same thing yeah and so but then do you do you do this this is my favorite masking tool this the, is much, much so I, yeah you said yeah. For, for like people who have uh, spiky hair like i used to <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah there you go and so and like i still what what hairs i have are spiky. <laughs> and then so um getting a haircut tomorrow there good news go. hey you're, tool. you're still getting them <laughs> I am so, ah, ah, ah. yes i am and uh i'm going to go ahead you know back in the old days men had to go to barbers to shave did you mm. know that nobody had their own shave wow People could not shave themselves until Gillette. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead, see how that thing, yep. I should narrate what I'm doing, how that thing was coming out. And then this scientific part of your eye right here that you want to maybe brighten as well on mm -hmm. the inside edge, because otherwise it doesn't look natural. And what's great about the smudge tool is, you know, it's not very useful, I don't think, for continuous tone images for mm -hmm. smudging. You can, of course, but I think it's the kind of beginner tool for that purpose yep but for masking i think it's super useful and the tool that it's analogous tool to if you want to think of it this way is i'll go ahead and switch to the i switch to the regular image and i'll choose liquify because mm -hmm. the really super analogous tool <clears throat> is this guy yeah so-called forward warp tool because i don't know if do you know why what is backward warping I don't, I don't yeah, know why they call it forward I mean, because technically this also does backward warping. <laughs> yeah, it does with the option key. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, except that's I don't right. know. Yep. I don't know. What, <laughs> that's I don't, exactly just what a warp tool. <laughs> but, but this does, you, you, you guys know this tool, of course. And, and, and it's got density, which is kind of analogous. I just want you to think about how yeah. what it's doing is displacing pixels, right? Yeah. That's what, that's what nudge, but, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say everything that runs with it. The smudge tool does is this pixel displacer, mm -hmm. except it thinks in terms of hardness, which is going to be analogous to density, mm -hmm. and then strength, which is going to be analogous to the strength of the of the uh, the the uh, warp tool right. inside uh, Liquify. And I, if once you, I think it helps to think of it that way because that way, if you want it to be a stronger tool or you want it to be a sharper tool mm -hmm. if you want to get like you want to like specifically nudge an element the way you might you might do so with the the liquify where you're going to get this is not the tool i do not want to be working on this layer i want to be working on this guy but this way i would have a lot more control over exactly right. which part of the mask i'm moving Exactly, and so it's it's a it's a super useful tool. I don't really yeah. think anything of the others. But well, it's one this, of those tools that you goes. know, face value is not as sexy or as, as cool, but it's one of those tools that you just have to use almost in every project. Yeah, yeah, especially for masking. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you've got to go and one of the things you can do. I don't really have a hair mask set up, but if I did, mm -hmm. you know, I could set one up pretty easily. But I'm just going to do it here. One of the things you can do with 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 hair, mm -hmm. obviously, if you just have some hairs that you just want to bring out then you can just do this number, drag one direction and drag it right back. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is introduce a little fuzziness mm -hmm. in just that tiny little area. Exactly. It's those yeah. little details. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway. So the other thing, I don't know, th this one, this, so, so everything I've been showing you, I elaborate on in my, in the, in, in my video, which I think we have a link mm -hmm. for. Um, and, link uh, link uh, in the description, by the way, there's a video yeah. coming out. Is it on Tuesday or Monday? Deke. It's Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So there's a new video coming on Deke's channel with a bunch of tips and tricks. There's, a, I don't know, dozens of videos you can go watch now. Link in the description. When you click on it, this little pop-up is going to come up. Make sure you subscribe and then check out all of Deke's videos. They're all incredible, as you can see from the tips and tricks we've been learning thus far. And and so, yeah. And so this one is just on my Patreon, which is so every week, <laughs> I don't, you know, every week I do a short, I do a long, mm -hmm. and I do a um, a Patreon. And um, so you can check that as well. Link, we should do a link for that too, can we? Yeah, sure. Um, just send it to me over okay. after the stream and I'll make sure to post it in the description. Okay. And and so um, this one is about, and, and my short is about this too. I think this is a little more rarefied and it's only going to appeal to some people, but it's about using vectors inside Photoshop. And, and I love 
working with vectors inside Photoshop because old school days when you were doing things like, and you still do this, you were just telling me you still do this kind of work mm -hmm. where you're doing magazine covers or mm -hmm. movie posters or that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And it becomes a question, what do I do when I am wanting to mix vectors with pixels? And I think a, a lot of folks, even if you're doing single page designs, this is my, my, my wife works and, mm -hmm. and she, she's teaching right now at the University of Colorado, this stuff. But she, um, she'll she use InDesign. She'll always default to InDesign for stuff. I'd, and even single page designs. And But other folks will default to Illustrator for that kind of work where you want right. to put like some some vector-based type in front of a, a, or in back of a photographic image, like put the headline in back of the head a little bit, that kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. still legible. I love to do everything inside Photoshop. Just that way you can control the resolution. You can bump the resolution. Everything that's a, Everything that's a vector, if you go to image size and you decide I should change the percent to a thousand percent, it's just going to grow. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter what you set resample to. It's not going to resample. It's just going to grow. It's going to recalculate all the pixels. Mm -hmm. So I really love working with vector stuff. And so what I've got here is um, a vector-based seal um, right here at this location. And it's so everybody back here, these guys are pixel-based layers down here. And of course, Jenner to fill, which is the way I created this, is all always pixels. But this guy's a type layer, which mm -hmm. is obviously a vector-based layer inside Photoshop. Has been since Photoshop 6, I want to say. And then this guy is a vector-based shape layer right there. And so what I want to do, though, I'm going to work inside this image, actually. What I want to do is I want to take in a vector, and I want to be able to use it any old way. And so right now I've got this vector based seal right here. This can't be, is this, is this, wait, he's set to, oh, I messed up this file, F12. There we I was go, working F12. on it. You see, <laughs> see that's, that's, F12. that's what gets us into trouble. I had, I, I'm just, just an aside to you. I had, I had, uh, this it was back at lynda.com days, we uh -huh. would have these booths that were assigned to us for about a week. Yep. And we 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 would have a person who kind of owned all the booths because she was the sound person. And and you you know this. The most important thing when you're creating videos is sound. It's mm -hmm. just sound is everything. And so she she would come in and she was working on sound in my booth. And I leave unsaved changes all the time because I didn't get through the project, right? <laughs> right. I'm I'm still working on it. So I want my save. I want my changes unsaved, yeah. and I just hope tomorrow, you know, I come in and they're there. And she and she uh, came in and she had to restart my machine for no good reason. I was so mad. And she and she was like, "So I went ahead and saved all your changes." And I was ooh, like, "Ooh, that is the one thing you can't undo. Yeah. If you quit yeah. the program, you're 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 hose." So yeah. anyway, uh. yeah. So. Um, so uh, thankfully, Leonard just anyway. said, I just followed Deke on YouTube. Awesome, Leonard. Everybody make sure you keep following Deke. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. That's By the way, Chad, that's why let, I let us saying... know if you've subscribed to Deke's channel. I want to see how many of you guys have subscribed. So make sure you go ahead and, and let me know. It's, it's really a valuable resource, as I mentioned before. I learned Photoshop from Deke. So if you like my stuff, I'm sure you're going to love Deke's. Uh, that's so kind of you to... <laughs> to say that i kept expecting you this is so funny i kept i kept thinking he the, the um, um uh, jesus is gonna say that he learned some stuff from me and then he's gonna say he learned a lot of stuff from colin as well and i was like just stick with me yeah <laughs> <laughs> jesus and you've done it i'm the only yeah. one who mentioned colin colin smith Photoshop the way. Cafe, anyway yeah good friend he's been yeah, on the show yeah yeah no he's Fantastic. So um, I, I have stolen several things from him. And as I have from you, I, I don't want you to feel left out. So let's say <laughs> what I want to do is I want to bring in this zigzag pattern that I created in Illustrator. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of shape tools in Photoshop. We're all familiar. <clears throat> but, you you know, controlling things like symmetry is really difficult. So yep. I go to Illustrator for that. And this guy, I'll just go ahead and double click on it. That's a way to switch automatically. There to you Illustrator. go. No shortcut, but you click. Have, the yeah. Was that a, was that a have a vector based sharp, smart object? Yeah. Do that yeah. and double click on yeah. it. And oh, you can see this is messed up. Is it messed up? No, it's not. Okay, never mind. I don't have my glasses on, so I couldn't tell. I thought I had a little bit of a circle still in there. Oh, all right. But yeah. but you know, right? Great thing, right? Is that you could have the right layer selected, which I don't. So I'm just going to make a fool of myself. It looks like no, it's here. It's right there. Mm -hmm. So I should be able to. I should be able to see the fact that I've got a live zigzag applied. But anyway, that's all that's going on here. I guess I went ahead and 
uh, rendered it out, expanded it, as as Illustrator likes to say. But this is just a filter called ZigZag, and it allows you to just create these corrugated edges. So what I want to do is I'm just going to copy this guy, and then I'm going to go back to the manual way, back to Photoshop. And what I want to do is paste it in here. So I'll just, you know, do that. And uh, it's not coming in. All right. So this is something that I run into actually a fair amount where I hope I don't have egg on my face because if I can't do this, this is going to uh, not be very fun. I'll just go ahead and draw a shape using one of the vector-based shape tools and I'll cut it. And hopefully what I'm having problems with, by the way, is the clipboard. Mm -hmm. And so I'll go back to Illustrator and hopefully I can copy. I don't know if this ever happens to you. Copy. And it's particularly a problem on the PC. Mm -hmm. And I'll go back to Photoshop and hopefully paste this did, before it was dimmed. So that's why I had to do that. So I basically had to clear out the clipboard. You can also go to purge and clip, you know, uh, clear the clipboard. But I'll choose paste here. And then you get this dialog box. So this is good. Phew, things are working. So anyway... The, the 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 thing about this dialog box is is you know obviously I'm sure that you know all about this Jesus which is if you have a multicolor piece of artwork and you want to be able to just scale it mm -hmm. that's what I did with this mm -hmm. was I pasted it as a smart object so mm -hmm. that I can you know you're still accessing Illustrator as if it's a Photoshop plugin you right. can always come back to it pixels is the one you don't want to select yep and then shape layer you could do with what i just did i could make a shape layer but then i'm locked i'm kind of locked into a shape layer the best way what i like to do with something like this where it's just i'm not sure what i'm going to do with it i'm i might come back to it any old time as path okay and then i'll just click okay and in this case what it just got done doing is it just turned it into a clipping mask mm -hmm. so it ruined that layer and i don't want to do that and if i had had this selected if i had had the entire group selected and i pasted and i said path it would go with the clipping group on that as well which can be handy but it's not what i want so i'll just make sure let's give myself a little more room if you have some blank space down here at the bottom you can just click on it to deselect all the layers. Mm. This is one of those times where you don't want a layer selected. And then if you paste in a path, it's gonna go directly to the paths panel. So it's gonna come in mm -hmm. looking empty like this. Notice it doesn't quite align. So I'm gonna just switch to the black arrow tool right here. Yeah. And I'll click on this guy and I'll just control T. I'm sorry I'm using keyboard shortcuts, but just control no, great. T. Control I love keyboard shortcuts. It's so good. By the way, talking about keyboard shortcuts, there's yeah. keyboard shortcuts to select layers like alt and bracket here, whatever, but there's no keyboard yeah. shortcut to deselect all layers. There's a shortcut to select them all. I just don't know if there's one to deselect them all. I don't think there it wait one second. Let me look for a second on that one. I'm I'm just gonna rotate this guy seven degrees. Yeah. I can't remember it's seven or negative seven. Okay. I just rotate in position. You got me thinking, cause they they've gotten so much better about this menu. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? They, 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 this is now a menu that they make because it used to be like as tall as the screen and mm -hmm. then some. And so they usually would expose anything because isn't isn't select all layers? As right far as I not? know, the only keyboard shortcuts are to to um, activate layers or to move to the next active layer. And then what is it? Uh, is it Alt and Shift A or something? Selects them all. And but yeah, there's control, no. It's Control. It's Control Alt A. Yeah, I yeah. There you go. Control Alt A. Yep. I think you have to have a layer selected before that works because it should be listed right here. Or is it listed in the select menu? Yeah. Deselect layers. You select layers. But there's no shortcut. <laughs> oh, but you can make a shortcut. Yeah, you can make a shortcut. That's right. You can make yeah, a you shortcut. You can make a shortcut. Using, obviously. That's interesting that, that they don't have a predefined shortcut to deselect all layers, but they do have one to select all layers. That's still genius that you just even asked that question because it's not under the layer menu. It's under the select menu. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I didn't know. That's because I didn't think. That's why I just showed what I showed. Yeah, I know. Because you got that, me thinking. I didn't thinking, think there was a command. You got me thinking because I use the select shortcut. So, like, a lot of times it's funny because I, like, right now when I said the shortcut, I said it wrong. But in my head, like, I know how to do it. I just don't think about what it actually is. You know what I mean? So, that's yeah, what I no. actually do. Yeah, because, I mean, I use this area mostly for this, right? Yeah. Changing the size of my thumbnails yeah. all the time. But anyway, anyway, yeah, but that's great. I'm, I'm serious. I, I did. I was just when I was working on this a little earlier today, I was just not knowing that. 
And so it put it in as a path, right? So it just put it in the path panel, right? So I could just call this guy zigzag. And the reason I want this to be named and ready to go is because I want to use it for a couple of different purposes. So first, right now, I've got, this is a, a vector-based layer right here that I, 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 I'm, I'm sure you're doing this too for thumbnails. I have the Photoshop icon mm -hmm. set up. Mm -hmm. And it's set in Adobe Clean, and it's generally easy to yep. remake the logo instead exactly. of doing a screenshot. Exactly. And so I've got it set up as a as a smart object That's here. Exactly but that means, what I have. Exactly yeah, the same thing. <laughs> yeah, but then you got to worry. Sometimes you don't want the rounded corners, yeah, and yeah. sometimes you do, and everything. So in this case, all I have it I have it set to the screen mode mm -hmm. because it really looks like this, right? And then yep. if I don't have if I didn't have this set up, then I would have these going into the zigzag pattern. Mm -hmm. And they're really hard to see. I just want to show, it's, it's, it drives me nuts. I, I do this all the time. If you look at my thumbnails, I have this all the time. If you look at my numbers really closely yeah. here, I clipped it. I clipped the blue into the sure. numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And so because that Photoshop background is so dark, but anyway, I digress. I want to get rid of that layer mask. So I'll just get rid of it there. And I want to replace it. So it's a pixel based layer mask. No good, right? If you can express things as a vector based layer mask, you're so much better off because then they scale. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that does not scale, it, yeah, I, like, I don't know. I think you take for granted, you, 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 you do this all the time too, I'm sure. You put your headshot in there, you mask it using select subjects. So you create a, you know, a ma it's just a placeholder mask, right? Yeah. Just to get it masked in there. And then you go and scale your head, which you expressed as a smart object, but you put your layer mask outside the smart object. So it's not scaling the same way. So it's re it's blurring the pixels. It's interpolating the pix pixels. So mm -hmm. if you can not have pixels, you're better off. And so in the case of a zigzag, right, it's, it's, you know, it's sharp edges. And so I just go here and instead of clicking on aid, add layer mask, you, this little guy right here, you press the control key or the command key on the mm -hmm. Mac and you click on it and that turns it into yep. a layer mask. And mm -hmm. so now, now it's masked in front of this thing. And that way that was hard to see because this thing was still sitting there. I'll just turn it off and I'll close this guy. This is an illustrator. I'm sorry. I'm moving quickly. Click. Yes. That's save button on the, on a PC mm -hmm. and uh, no, it's on the Mac. It's a save button, but you can see now that's gone. But now if I turn this back on, Oh, and I don't set it to screen. And I set it to normal instead. You can see it's clipped inside there. But I just want to show this last thing, and then I'm I'm, I'm done. Is that um, another way you might the, 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 I, again because we deal with these logos all the time? Another way to express this is to say, forget about it. I don't want it to be enclosed in a smart object. I'll just I'll just create the type in Adobe Clean, which is not one of those. Fonts that Adobe gives away really easily, but it is out there. You go to a developer site and you can find it. And then I would go back to my paths panel, click on it, and I want to turn that into a vector-based shape layer. Mm -hmm. And you do that by dropping down to the black-white icon and choosing solid color or gradient or pattern, right? It can be filled with any of those. Right. But I would go with solid color and then I would dial in. Darn I meant to lift a color in advance, but I think it's I think it's this. I think it's 27121. Click OK. It's a very dark blue in any case. And now it's a vector-based shape layer right there. And there so go. the great thing about working with a, mat, a path in the first place is you have those kinds of options mm -hmm. available to you. And so unless you're going with a smart object, in which case you have a more elaborate you know, right. illustration. But anyway, that's it. Just a, a bunch of, you know, that's kind of a grab bag right there, just the paths alone, but a little bit of a grab bag of tips and tricks that Amazing. Uh, might help you out. No, I love it. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think. Before we go, I want you to share with us one of your favorite Photoshop tips and tricks. It could be a shortcut. It could be just a feature, whatever you want. I'll give you time to think about it. In the meantime, I'm going to tell a story that I wanted to share publicly. I did my very first uh, paid speaking engagement with you. That was in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Around that was your first time? That was my first time, yeah. Oh, I loved you. Oh, that's so that was awesome. My, to so know I was that. I was terrified because they took up us uh, took us up on stage. They had all the speakers lined up, and we had to share a, a tip or a trick. Creator Pro Minneapolis, like 2016, 2015, around that time. And I remember sitting down on stage, and I look to my left, and I see Bert Colin Smith, and I look to my right, and you're like next to me, and then Chris Converse, and a bunch of other people who are now all great friends, and you know, see you guys, text you guys all the time, talk on the phone all the time. But I was, I was terrified. 
And in this conference, we had to go up and we were kind of competing against each other. We had to show a Photoshop tip and trick and we were competing for an audience member. And then the winner of that tip uh, will win for the audience member who would then get prizes, whatever it was that year. And um, I'm going to fast forward for a little bit, then I'll come back. So that is one of my favorite conferences, Creative Pro, because all these other speakers are great friends of mine. We have this little competition going. Since then, I've won every single um, they call it uh, the three minute max competition, the tip competition, except for one. So my very first one, I lost to you, Deke. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it well. And then uh, after that, I won them all except for one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Who, who would you lose to? Um, it wasn't me because I was yeah, there. Uh, Nigel, Nigel French. I lost to Nigel French oh, two years yeah. ago. Um, but so I've won, I think, love, a total of like my Nigel. five or four, whatever the number it's been. But it's it's always really funny because we we as instructors really get into it. I, I I think about it as like a freestyle battle where we're you know battling each other. So like it, there's a, a joke about you know how seriously I take it and I do I take it very seriously. And I remember I wanted to win so bad that year, and then you just you know you just killed me. And then after that, I was like, no, I got to win. I got to win. So then I, I won a bunch. But I, it's so funny that like I was I felt like because I grew up in that. So I was a soccer player, played in college. So like I have that athlete mentality of like, I want to win. So in my mind, I was like, I got to beat like the man, which was you. <laughs> but you schooled me. So I, I you know, I lost. <laughs> it's so funny because there were some great tricks. So you what I love. I thought you were going to win. Either you or Chris Converse because Chris yeah. showed. The the thing Chris showed the best trick in my opinion. Yeah, he, he showed. Had a good one. He sho yeah, yeah, he showed how to mask against mm -hmm. the green screen, but he was showing in After Effects. Yeah, and and nobody really in that audience knows how to use After yeah. Effects. Yeah, and I showed and something with 3D, which probably was a bad idea. <laughs> Photoshop 3D. I don't know you did, but then you showed the banana. Tool. <laughs> I did show the banana tool at the you end. You showed yeah. the banana tool. The banana I've tool. never seen the banana tool before. What do you do? You I, I can't even remember uh, how three it works. dot right icon. Here. Yep, and then go into edit click? toolbar. Edit toolbar. No, just. Uh, Edit toolbar and then shift click undone. Shift click undone, and then and, you have and, a banana tool. I was like, <laughs> I didn't know that. And but then and then this is a, the, the crazy thing: tool. You have to, to remove click. it, you have to hold Alt. You have to hold Alt yeah. when you clicked on or before. Uh, same same process. Instead of holding shift, you hold Alt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a great trick. I thought you were going to win because of that, because it's yeah. really approachable. Yeah, I didn't know it. Yeah, uh, not that I knew what Chris was up to, but it was he, yeah. he. This was pro results, and then there's another guy. I just don't know his name, and he showed that history trick, which was just Ooh. too much work. It was really good. Yeah. It was basically turn on history. Yeah, and then it'll sit there and record your history, and then turn it off. And you can make a keyboard shortcut to turn it on and off, and that way, when you want to record your history, you record it. It was just like. It, it's just like oh, nobody. Oh, was it was it a history log? Is that what it was? Yeah, history log. History log, log yeah. yeah. And turn it on and off so that you you record, you record the your steps. Just yeah. Record your steps. Records so yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. So much. Yeah. And I did. And he was really he he was actually after it was over and I won. He was like, "You won." <laughs> and it was seriously because <laughs> well, my a, trick. You did an underwater scene with um auto levels or auto auto curves or something. I. I showed how to use auto levels. That's yeah. all I did. I showed yeah. how to use the auto yeah. levels command. There I would, go. if I could find the file, I'd show it. So, right what's now. your 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 trick? Do you have anything? Any last keyboard yes. shortcut? Anything you yes. want to show us? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's go. Last one. I love I love grouping layers. Grouping right? layers. I mean, everybody loves grouping layers. But I like, and, and, you know, you work fast and you work slow, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. you work very quickly. You want to get something done and, you know, damn, damn, damn the layer names. You know, you just, you're going to go with layer one, layer mm -hmm. 1.5, you know, whatever, layer one copy. And, and, but other times you're being meticulous and anytime you're grouping layers, I think you're in a meticulous mood. So, right. I just want to group these layers. I forget where the command is. I think it's here someplace. Yeah, it's right there. It's group layers. But that's not the way I work. Everyone press, I hope everyone presses control G, right? Mm -hmm. Command G on the Mac. Right. But then quite like a completely out of character for the fact I'm being careful, it calls it group one. It doesn't let me name the layer as I create it. Right. And so I want control G to bring up a dialog box that lets mm. me name those things mm -hmm. as, as I create them. So this is just a keyboard shortcut, but you go to keyboard shortcuts. I might have it open already. No, I don't. You go to the layer menu and you have two groups right away. Don't do this because what that does is if you assign control G to just group, I'll do it. And then I'll just say, you know, add shortcut, click OK. It doesn't matter. It's modified. I don't care. And But if you do that, you do something you don't do in any other software. If you press control G now, 
you're asked to wow. name the layer and yeah. I'll call it quite accurately empty because it won't have anything in it because I went with the group command just dot 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 which is so it's 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 like who invented that command cuz who wants to create a group with nothing in it that like <laughs> every other software illustrator if wow. you were grouping a bunch of objects imagine if you grouped them and they didn't get grouped there yeah. you just had an empty group sitting there so i just want you to know that the one you want to go with cuz it's very tempting to go with this guy you want group from layers wow yeah. use that to control g say add shortcut and then click OK. And now what happens is you print, you have all your layers selected. Oh, I did that Windows thing. You have all those layers selected and you press Control G and you say uh, it's a seal um, and click OK. And now they're all grouped together. And so doesn't matter changing. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's, that's actually a I really work. cool uh, tip that you just showed. Not necessarily, yes, the grouping is amazing and incredible and all that. But I think the big takeaway here is that a lot of times you can take keyboard shortcuts that are set in Photoshop for something and reset them for something better that kind of does the same thing. For example, um, instead of using the keyboard shortcut for creating like a, the levels adjustment, you can use the same keyboard shortcut to create a levels adjustment layer, for example. You know, so yeah. still use the keyboard shortcuts that you don't use, but use them for something similar or, or you know, basically the same that give you more control, like in this case. Yeah. It, it, and 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 I do, and just just along those same lines, because I do the same thing. The um the keep so you, you were talking about levels, right? Yeah, Which is image my adjustment. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, and he's he's Control L. Control L. Yep. The old the old days. Uh, control Shift L is set to my favorite for correcting turtles underwater. Yes. Which is autotone. <laughs> That's the only reason it's useful, actually. Because <laughs> we're getting, getting the most claps on stage. This is what this command is That's useful. That's exactly what it does. Otherwise, it's no good. <laughs> and so... Control Shift L is the one I have assigned to making a levels adjustment. That's like. incredible. So, All right, well, just, just thank, wanted to echo what you were saying. Yeah, um, Deke, thank you so much for joining us. Oh my God, I'm I'm drooling here. Thank you so much. Awesome. For, <laughs> thank you so much for joining I us. I think invoke. you showed incredible Drool. killer Photoshop tips and tricks. Everybody, please go down below in the description. There's a link to Deke's channel where you can watch a ton of incredible videos. Like one of my favorite things, Deke, is how well you explain Photoshop. I think it has a lot to do with your math background. I don't know what it is, but the way you explain Photoshop to me is just incredible. I learned a few things today. I'm sure you will as well. Deke, any last words before we, we cut the stream? No, I mean, you taught me. I, I now know there's a deselect <laughs> layers command. I'm gonna have to sign a keyboard <laughs> shortcut to it. Might just be all the all the mashers, you know, all the all the key, the modifier keys and A. But anyway, that's right. Yes, thank you so much. I really, really had a blast. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank we'll you. see you soon. Thank you. And thanks Bye. to everybody. Okay. Yeah. Take care. Bye.